All right. Well, Rowan, welcome to Real Talk. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So let's talk DevNet. What is DevNet and why is it important? Yeah. DevNet is like the first release for WebStream to the public, basically. The team has been working since last year to work on this like a web stream, mm -hmm. which is a middleware trying to funnel in all the data from real world devices and do a compression validation and produce a proof mm -hmm. that goes to the smart blockchain. It actually uh, opens up a lot of new use cases, right? Mm -hmm. Like our engineers and research behind the scene has been really working really hard in the, through the year. So we're proud, you know, we're going to launch our DevNet very soon. Awesome. Yeah. So who is DevNet for? Exactly. Exactly. So DevNet definitely like uh, uh, is for deep in developers, mm -hmm. for deep in projects, right? So we're trying to address this transparency problems within a lot of deep in projects. Because what they have usually is like a device on one end, user on uh, other end. But like the centralized like kind of computational oracle, the option part, is usually just a server. They mm -hmm. host, right, to mm -hmm. trying to run the data and produce a proof. And we want to replace this part with WebStream. Of course, there are other use cases. Um, for example, so we, we do get some, uh, you know, feedback from deep in projects saying, okay, so we want to get some extra data from the real world from the device to our smart contract directly. Mm -hmm. So that's another use case as well. Okay. Yeah. How do you think DevNet will change the IoTex ecosystem? Yeah, so that's a really good question. You know, so if you look at the DPIM, so DPIM is really small right now. So mm -hmm. there are like in total maybe 30, 40 projects and maybe 10 good ones, you know, or bigger ones. And the rest of them are pretty small right now. Uh, so that's why like a way we were thinking why this looks in this way, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's perhaps because like the innovation, the cost for innovation is really high. Yes. Like the tech stack is like a really think, you know, really think about, you know, you have to do hardware, firmware on the hardware smart contract, blockchain, some middleware part to, you know, massage the data, eventually mm -hmm. web app or mobile app. That's like a lot of things, right? Like a few yeah. teams can do this. Maybe Helium team can do this, right? right. Uh, but not every team. So we want to kind of like uh, abstract away a lot of underlying stuff, such as hardware, such as middleware mm -hmm. for the developers. So they can, you know, innovate without too much cost, you know, in terms of time and money, and, you know, uh, effort to have a, like a new deep in project. It reminds me of Ethereum actually, the way Ethereum reduced the development time of crypto dApps from years to literally a click of a button in some cases. Yeah. DevNet could be that for deep in projects, reducing development time from years to weeks or days even. Yeah, that's that, that, that that's my dream actually, within, yeah. within hours even, right? So if you look at, look at D5 for example, so as an individual developer or maybe full stack developer, you can just cook up a DeFi application within a few hours, right? Yeah. Just try to fork the code from Compound, from MakerDAO, from Uniswap, do a little bit of like editing, and you launch a new project, right? So exactly, we want the same thing for DeepIn as well. Because, you know, um, we have a lot of internal conversation, even like a conversation with our partners in terms of like uh, which of the utilities in terms of like DeepIn will go for like a $1 trillion kind of uh, growth, right, mm -hmm. in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the answer. We have to do a lot of ver vertical experiment, mm -hmm. try to figure out, oh, is that wireless, is that 5G or a car, energy? We don't know, we have to try. Yeah, so you touched on it just now a little bit, but DevNet's been a long time coming. What was the development process like and where do you go from here? What's the next iteration? Yeah, definitely. DevNet, uh, as I said, is the first release of the product, right, mm -hmm. of the protocol. Um, so definitely like uh, down the road, we will have a testnet and a mainnet launch as well. But you know, launching the devnet gave us the opportunity to work with deep in developers, builders, projects really closely, try to get enough feedback in terms of like, what do they want? How can we support, mm -hmm. right? In terms of building this product better. So that's a really huge milestone for the team. Absolutely. And yeah. can you share what features of devnet the ecosystem right now is most excited about? Yeah. I think uh, there are like uh, three main features for the DevNet. So one is data streaming. So mm -hmm. you will be able to, you know, connect your data from the device all the way, you know, piping it through to the, to the smart contract. So that's one. A second one is like compute on top of the streaming data. That's mm -hmm. kind of a thing um, very unique to WebStream. If you look at other similar products such as, you know, Streamer or such as uh, Ceramics, 
Um, so they don't have this compute compatibility built into the stream because that's hard, mm -hmm. right? So that's mm -hmm. something like a, uh, we can offer. And third one is the identity. Like how mm -hmm. do you bind like a device to the owner, to the token, who, who's mining a token? Uh, I think a web stream is a solution to go. Do you have a sense of the nature of the incentive models that deep end projects more generally will employ and which ones will be successful in your opinion? Um, yeah, so that's a really good question. So for deeping, right? So they have, uh, usually like uh, they are borrowing a lot of ideas from sure. Helium, right? It's like a, what's it called? Burn mean to equilibrium. Mm. Basically means like you're meeting new tokens at the same time you're burning a token and eventually if the demand side goes up, you mm -hmm. burn small token, you get some sort of equilibrium. That's the idea. So that's why Helium has two tokens. One is the HNT. Basically, have a miner to mine this HNT by providing wireless kind of connectivity to nearby devices. And one is DC, which is burning HNT to get DC. So as a data consumer, you have, or like a wireless consumer, you have to like burn some or use some DC, right, to access the network. Okay. I think a lot of different projects are actually like a kind of borrowing the same concept for their token economic design. Hmm. Thanks for that. That's a that's a yeah. great answer. Yeah. And so. Which projects specifically are you most excited about using DevNet? Can you share some of the partners? Yes, we have some great partners, you know, uh, for our DevNet launch. So definitely like a demo is a big partner for us. Mm -hmm. So they are doing like a kind of drive to our uh, type of uh, application. So on one side, they give you user like a hardware. Uh, you can just like a ESA OBD dangles, you can just purchase from their website, you know, connect to their, uh, to your car, actually drive around, mm. contribute on data, to the demo protocol and earn the demo token. I think that's pretty interesting. And WebStream definitely like a plays an important role over there, you know, so uh, in terms of like a pipeline user's data from the car all the way to their protocol and mm -hmm. also doing some sort of compute in the middle to produce a proof, like how well you're driving, how safe you're driving, you know, are you driving the way you're saying you're driving, you know, so that type of things like uh, WebStream is definitely helping them with. So let me ask you a high level vision question. Yeah. Let's say five years from now, DevNet and, and the mainnet launch are maximally successful. What does the world look like? What does IOTEX look like? What does the ecosystem look like? Yeah, I like it. I like this question because I saw this a lot. I, I think if we were really successful in the next five years, so the world will be looking very differently, right? So think about Uber. Every time you have to you know, use Uber to home a car, right? Um, if you want to go to it somewhere. But I think if the web stream become like a real thing, a lot of like a decentralized Uber will pop up in different regions of the world, mm -hmm. right? So I think uh, entrepreneurs, drivers, even investors, I mean like uh, retail investors, so they can work together in a DAO fashion using WebStream as an underlying infrastructure. So you will have like a Uber everywhere that mm -hmm. reduces the cost, improves the efficiency. Yeah. Right? Tesla might be another example, right? Maybe decentralized kind of, I don't know, are, are like a car manufacturing or like a car, um, dealer basically trying to collect people's car data and to build like Google map or some products around it. Hmm. Energy store is also interesting, right? Yeah. So you can have your like energy store in the battery and maybe trade to another person on the other end of the world who's kind of, uh, you know, in their nighttime. So they have hmm. no electricity, right? Basically trying to um, optimize how the resource is actually allocated around the world. I think that's a really big one. Hmm. For and everybody. what would you say is the main call to action right now for the community for DevNet? Yeah. So DevNet is definitely something like a new challenging and uh, all, of course like game changing, right? Um, so we ask everybody, you know, to give us some feedback in terms of like how your experience, you know, when you're interacting with uh, with the DevNet, mm -hmm. especially if you're a developer, you should definitely get your hands dirty, you know, to do a, even like a hobby projects on top of DevNet, mm -hmm. like have a Raspberry Pi hook up to a DevNet, do a, like a mining because of you know some sort of utility a Raspberry, Pi, a Raspberry Pi can provide. If you're a developer, if you're like a uh, let's see, um, uh, if you're like an everyday person, definitely like give it a try. So we have a lot of baby deeping projects. I actually call me. So I think they need to see the users as well. So definitely like uh, you know don't shy away from trying those projects. They are early. They look ugly. But they will be big, you know. <laughs> they might have tokens too, <laughs> exactly. right? <laughs> Airdrop of tokens. That's right. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah. So definitely, like, uh, give us more feedback. I think uh, we can do this on our forum for sure. But you can also do this in a more official way. That's our like, governance process. So we have this kind of IIP IoTax improvement protocol. 
it's not necessary to confine to any like a layer one type of governance. So we want to make this IIP more applied to both web stream, you know, IOTEX tokens, a layer one protocol, everything around the IOTEX network. So are there any features of DevNet that are just around the corner in the next six months, 12 months that you can give us a little teaser about? Yeah, so so like I mentioned about, right? So uh, I think my DevRel team is working really hard for demonstrating um, using some tutorials or even like a toy project to illustrate like the concept. Mm -hmm. For example, you can have your Raspberry Pi, your phone, or even some homemade IoT devices and hook up, you know, use of course using the WebStream SDK, um, and hook up with WebStream like a really seamlessly and produce a token or an NFT, right? Like a dynamic NFT even, right? Because maybe you're doing something here on the Raspberry Pi on your home camera, so you're getting a token or NFT on the other side. Mm, yeah. Okay. So let me ask you a little bit more of a, a price related question. Do you think DPIN and DevNet and the larger machine five vision, could that be, will that be a primary catalyst of the next bull run? I do think so. I do think so. Uh, because there are a couple of reasons I think so, right? So first, um, this DPIN is a really kind of tied to the real world economy, mm -hmm. which is a roughly $500 trillion market, compared to which, you know, entire crypto is less than one trillion. Right. So well, you know, five, five hundreds. Uh, in terms of size. So if we have a way to kind of bridge this two world in you know, a crypto world and this $500 trillion real world, I think this will be like a really giant sector to grow. So that's kind of very high level. And, uh, you know, going a little bit down to the details. So if you look at the DeFi, right? So there are, of course, some good innovations in terms of lending, DAX, so, so on and so forth. But a lot of DeFi is just like a kind of Ponzi games, to be honest. Yes. Right? Yeah. But DP is very different. So DP is actually, you know, having a real hardware producing some real world utility. Could it be your energy store, wireless transportation, yeah. uh, ESG, so on and so forth, um, which will actually accrue some like intrinsic values back to the token as you use the token to grow the devices or deployment of the devices. So that this is very different from like a pure DeFi games, right? It yeah. has some sort of like a DeFi elements into this one, but it's purely, uh, but it also has some real world utility building too. That's why I'm also, you know, thinking mm. this will be the real big one mm. if we really want a massive adoption for crypto technology. At some point, crypto has to leave the financialization side because the primary innovations so far have been financial. Exactly. But at some point, we do have to provide real use cases and utility. And there's really not a better sector than physical devices. And sharing that wealth with Web3 incentives is a beautiful way of bringing everyone into the future economy. I mean. So, you know, like everybody was saying, oh, in order to have a massive adoption, we need a better wallet, a better UI, so people yes. can understand and use, right? I, I think it's uh, it's true, but not the must-have part. To me, like the real world utility is a must-have, right? So think about mm -hmm. giving some examples here. Maybe every time you pay your utility bill, like the UI UX was terrible. It's terrible, at least for me, right? <laughs> but you still have to use that, yeah, right? Yeah. Because there are true utility behind the thing. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's why I think DPIN is kind of really big or must have for crypto to, you know, broadcast to the world. Huh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, if there's a real utility there, people will put up with bad UI. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. even Uber, right? So like right. Uber Lyft is not, in it's not perfect in terms of UI, UK, UI, UI, UX, but you have to use it. Right. You got to get places. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Awesome, Ron. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs>